hello and welcome to people places and things i'm hank cisco and with us today we have a distinguished guest when i say extinguished because it's an extinguished family the gennardi family and with us we have tom gennardi uh, one of the brothers a successful businessman and who is now retired taking it easy here and enjoying this morning here at Norristown high school tom we want to, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about Norristown, growing up in Norristown, some of your experiences, maybe some words of wisdom that uh, help kids along the way now here at high school, they're getting ready for graduation, and, and some of the things that helped you along the way. Tell us something about your family. Well, first, Hank, I want to congratulate you for the wonderful job you're doing, getting involved with a lot of projects in the Norristown area. Uh, secondly, uh, as far as Norristown is concerned, I have to talk about my parents who came from a little place in Italy called Sicily, a little town, a fishing town called Shaka. And they both came over and turned of the century. They married here and have nine children. I'm the sixth one from the whole town. Uh, we lived in Norristown, Sandy and High Street. I was born and uh, by a midwife, or I think we all were. You're right. <laughs> and, uh, <coughs> Sandy and High Street, uh, little, we had a little corner store at that time, and my father, uh, who, uh, of course, with nine children, <coughs> had a little vegetable garden, and he raised vegetables to uh, feed the family. And as time goes on, he wind up uh, raising so many vegetables that we couldn't eat it. He'd wind up selling to a local people, and uh, that's how, actually how it started. He'd wind up buying vegetables, and sell them to neighbors and expand it to the other parts of Norristown. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> but anyhow, uh, Norristown has been very great for us. Uh <coughs> Excuse me, I recall. The, um, the childhood days in Sandy and High Street, where we were born and raised with lots of families, big families, and we enjoyed playing in the neighborhood. But we have a lot of fond memories of Norristown. Uh, we across the street from us, we had a St. Joe's Protectory, which was built in 1886, which was a home for wayward girls. Uh, then I remember the old city hall. I remember the YMCA on DeKalb Street, and uh, of course many other things. The the uh, four movie houses in Norristown, which are no longer there, Block Department Store, Chapman's Department Store, and it was really a lot of fun walking on Main Street on a Saturday night, buying a hot dog, get uh, gang bones for five cents. <laughs> and uh, of course, those days are gone forever. But uh, I went to Holy Savior School, which was a parochial school, which was on um, Marshall and um, Walnut Street, which is no longer there. Then I went to Rittenhouse Junior High School. That was a great school. And uh, we walked still from Sandy and High Street to, which is now I mean, it's a retirement home, I believe. Yeah. And uh, which is better than two miles, we walk to school every day. No school buses. No right? school buses. No school buses. <coughs> and of course, we carried our lunch. Uh, the other thing is that uh, then I went to Norristown High School, which was there on Markley Street. And I guess that's part of my schooling. That and the rest of the schooling that I had was really a school of hard knocks, uh, working as an early teenager. Uh, my parents had uh, regular trucks that we would serve customers twice a week. At the age of 18, I was on a truck selling vegetables to customers twice a week. And actually, their whole family were involved in business to feed nine, nine children. Everybody had to pull their own weight. And uh, we all worked, worked very hard. We played hard as well. Uh, the, at one time, we had four trucks on the road. And uh, when the war came along, myself and my two brothers were drafted into the service. I was one of the first teenagers to be drafted World War II. And after the war, we came back. We had no trucks on the road. We stayed in a little superette, which is up in Jeffersonville. Mm -hmm. And uh, at that time, why, uh, we had a lot of competition, and we grew with the industry from the first uh, self-service meats to the first uh, self-service produce and what have you, to the famous supermarket that you see today. But uh, Norristown has been a very, very nice city, always was. And uh, I really have, have to say that we enjoyed every bit. We had no uh, class distinction at that time, probably 
as today's standards we're poor but we would never know that we're poor right. <laughs> because we had plenty to eat your mother baked bread did she my mother would bake bread she bought flour by 100 pound bags and baked bread at least twice a week mm. a lot of times we would go down to brazillo's which was then then on um, main and walnut street and buy one pound cake of yeast that she needed the yeast to bake the bread and brazil at that time was a very big bakery and right. uh, probably the only one in our town at that time right and uh, we belonged to holy savior's church which is still there today at uh, what is now the cellar my parents were married in in the cell of the in church the cellar of the church today and then they built the upper level and all of their children were married at that Holy Savior's Church. How about that? So we go back a little few years. Now you mentioned Rittenhouse Junior High School. You know, I went to Rittenhouse Junior High School. I guess everybody that you talk to went to Rittenhouse Junior High School. The predom uh, predominantly, from the Norristown was divided. Sweet Street uh, uh, West would go to Stewart, and uh, uh, Sweet Street East would go to Rittenhouse. And uh, and most of the probably the Judges, Judge Dana Howard, Judge Tack, a lot of judges that went to Rittenhouse. Also, prominent family like Tommy Lasurda family all went to Rittenhouse. Uh, the the Turnetta family went to Rittenhouse. Um, the Marchese family, very successful in oil business. Um, also, um, uh, the Mirabili family yeah. with, the, uh, with the beverage companies. So we had quite a few poor families that now I can say that. The, uh, most of them are millionaires, I guess, in a sense. Wouldn't you say well, that? Well, I would say so. Yeah. Uh, millionaires, I guess uh, you would say that. Uh, you have to remember one thing that I remember, that when we started, we did not spend money unless we had it. And the first time that my father borrowed money from someone was when we opened the first super right up in Jeffersonville, and it was against his thinking that we should borrow money. He felt that you should only pay for something, if, buy something if you had the money. So uh, you, you take the Grecos. I remember the Norristown Produce. The only way they got started was they went to Mr. Glenn from Merck and Bank. That's the Greco family. Greco family. And he borrowed money to buy one truck. He had, didn't have the assets right. to put down, but Mr. Uh, Alan Glenn believed in the, in the family structure, and that's how they got started. And many of us, the same way, the Mr. Glenn, who knew a lot of local people. It was that were Glenn was from family, the bank, right? From the bank, the president yeah, of the bank. I remember him. And he believed in the people, and the people, uh, he gave them money, he gave them whatever they needed to get started, and he never lost any money. How old were you when you started getting involved with the Gennardi family market? Well, I was, um, after World War II, when we came back, I actually got a start in the store in Jeffersonville at uh, 19, well, 21 years old. I was the first one drafted. I was the first teenager drafted. Uh, and then we just stayed from the business from there on in. Well, the, you, the family retired and sold the business. But now I understand you set up a Gennardi Foundation and well, helping actually people. the story, Hank, my brothers and I, five of us, had two sons each. In 1990, we sold the business to our sons. And in 2000, they wind up selling to Safeway. Um, there was 40, 40 stores, I believe, total. But that's, uh, that's about it. But now Gennardi's owned by another. Gennardi's is owned by Safeway Supermarkets. And but, but in your California. retirement, you're involved with this here Gennardi Foundation. Uh, Tell uh, us about that. Well, the foundation, the boys, with the money that they received from the sale, um, started the foundation, which they give money out to all charity groups. Last year, I believe, they gave away $5 million to local charity schools and different organizations within the community. That's great. Now, I understand just, just recently you donated uh, something for abuse and uh, neglected children, uh, the uh, Silver Springs uh, Martin Luther School, right. which is very helpful, and, and, and different <coughs> organizations you're helping. That means that you're putting money back in the North, well, in the North Town area, not only North Town. Well, Hank, we, we've been doing this for years. I know that, right. For, since we've been, I think maybe for maybe 15 years, we've given out 1% uh, redemption back on the coupons, through cash register slips to any nonprofit organization mm -hmm. that qualified. And we've given out millions and millions of dollars back to the community because that's where we made the, the money and we want to give back to the community who's been very good to us. And you mentioned school. Do you remember 
teachers what what teacher do you remember the most i know written out in high school it was joe burnett everybody remember joe burnett all joe burnett was our football coach i play football and he was a tough guy he was good remember mr mckenzie was my math teacher he didn't like me too much because i was pretty good at math and uh... he didn't like the style i could just read numbers and just count them in my head without saying two and two is four i would say two four eight ten whatever uh... and then of course in parochial school sister rhea who was a great nun said she was never there she was she was never wrong and when she would get finished beating me why my good home my father would beat me with a paddle so i heard that comedian tells a joke so i went to a parochial school he said the nun was so tough she says uh, they call her sister uh, perpetual pain yeah you know <laughs> so uh, so uh, they, but they they guided us you know and, and you know to uh, make sure that uh, you know, we attended school and you know we did what was right they taught us respect you got your respect from home but also when you went to school uh, how about uh, uh, did you play any kind of sports i played football in joe burnett at rittenhouse at rittenhouse uh -huh. And my number happened to be 32, and I think everybody knows what 32 is. Yeah, that's <laughs> <laughs> And, uh, but uh, now, also, now, uh, the, the uh, father, Gaspar Gennardi, uh, is he related to you? He's the um, He's my nephew. He is the first grandson uh, that was born into the family, that was came into the family. And he's a pastor down at St. Cosmo Damien in Country Hocken. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know he's a well liked. Yes. Right, does a very good job. He's it's a good friend of my son who is a missionary yeah. priest in, in Peru. I know when he comes home, they go out and they have dinner and they have uh, they meet different people. Uh, what else do you remember? Uh, uh, what 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 do you think is uh, one of the most important ingredients? You know, when you get the, the, a family the family tie, what's a good ingredient? Well, I think the parents have an awful lot to do with it. They taught us the the right from wrong and uh, discipline. Uh, my father was a would render the discipline. My mother would give us all the love and attention. Uh, so it, it was a balance there. And when my father turned the business over to us, I think about 1947, 48, and he said, the five of you are like a chain. As long as you stay together, he said, nobody's going to beat you. You got to be fair, be honest, and not cheat the people, give them their fair shake for their dollar. So I think that says a lot about how we were brought up. Now, your brothers, now, every, everybody knows the family. Now, you're, you're Tom. You're the sixth, sixth brother out of right. nine. Sixth now, member of the family. And the oldest, the oldest brother is who? Charlie is the former president. He's going to be, I think, 93 in September. Uh, and then there's Frank. Uh, then there's uh, my brother Joe, who died Christmas a year ago. Myself, my brother uh, Jim, and my brother Sal. Then I have three sisters, Pauline, who died a few years ago, my sister Anne, and my sister Rose. And that, but but all your brothers all worked at the. Uh, except one. Except one. Yeah, he's out in California. Oh yeah. And then, I remember when I was, we we didn't play together a lot. I think when you were on Sandy Street, and I lived in the. Uh, on Chestnut Street, so actually, I think we played baseball once or twice, and but uh, we knew each other, but uh, never. Uh, I'm sure our paths crossed occasionally. Yeah, we did. Yeah, <laughs> and then we later on we involved with the Italian Heritage Council, which you were uh, treasurer, right, at the time, and uh, that's an organization of uh, Italian political American action. Heritage group. Council, which myself right. and two others were the founders, and very proud of the organization, who right. the political political action committee and uh, were very which which pertain which entailed all at the Italian Americans to help the local politicians who we believe in whether it be Democrat or Republican well what's what's tell me something uh, what's the most exciting thing that happened for you I know you're a great golf guy right? I know you like to play golf See, I'm, I'm my profession is boxing but yours is golf so uh, well, I think one of the greatest things that happened to me, I played with Arnie Palmer a few years ago. Oh, my God. Uh, 18 holes. He was a great guy. I really enjoyed what it. What course was that? Down at the Winston-Salem Tanglewood Country Club uh -huh. down at uh, North Carolina. 
And then you, you, you go to Puerto Rico. Uh, do you have a business there? Or no, no. We, I go to Puerto Rico. I have a place down in Puerto Rico. I've been there for 12 years now. Love it. And you, you, sh you in other words, you spend part of the time here and About four months in Puerto Rico. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but, uh, but you'd say that the most influential person in your life would say? Well, I would say my parents, but other than my parents, whenever I had a serious problem I didn't want to discuss with them, I would go to a very, very good friend of ours, which was Charlie Greco from Norristown Produce. Mm -hmm. He was like a second father to me. Right. And he would listen to me and give me advice that, that kind of put me on the right path. Yeah, he was, he was a great guy, yeah. And they, they were, he was president of uh, Northtown Produce, Produce, right? Very which, successful which you did business, business with, right? Uh, what, what, what do you remember most about Norristown? Now that, you know, things have changed, but what do you remember most that, about Norristown? Well, I think Norristown is like so many other little towns. Everything centered around Main Street, USA. But without in Main Street, USA, there's no place really for the people to congregate. You have the shopping centers that are in the suburban areas. It's just not the same. So now the young kids go down to the mall and play around there. They don't can't very well no play place. baseball inside right. the mall, but they socialize with looking for girls yeah, and boys. Right. <laughs> well, that's a good, a good meeting <laughs> place, right? I, I can agree. We didn't have much of a meeting place uh, other than Main Street, Main Street and Friday USA. and Saturday nights, and everybody would walk up and down. But let me, let me, now, Gennardi, okay? A lot of people are, how do you pronounce it? It's a Gennardi or Genuardi? The proper pronunciation is Genuardi. You pronounce all That's syllables. G-E-N-U-A-R-D-I. Yeah, Genuardi. You know, it, it's the same thing when you say New Orleans. You say yeah. New Orleans or yeah. New Orleans, yeah. you know, it, 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 hesitation. But you say Genuardi. Genuardi, so the that proper with, pronunciation. That gives it with class, okay? Um, you know, I know I, my, my background is being a police officer, and I remember you mentioned about St. Joseph's Protectory for Girls, but a lot of people that still live in Norristown or Norristown area, if you go up Sandy Street by Walnut, you'll see a, a big stone wall, and that was uh, the wall that uh, on the other side was a detention center, the Protectory for Girls, were sent in from the courts from Philadelphia. And I remember when we get a call that somebody escaped and some of these girls would go over the wall and we'd be chasing them all over town. We know all about that. They would run over the wall and socialize with us on the corner. And you lived right on the corner there. Right, the right, corner. right. Well, you know, and, you, and, and you, you mentioned that you didn't have a school bus. You had to walk to school. So you're talking about walking to school uh, in the morning and then walking back two miles at night. And you didn't All have a cafeteria. No cafeteria, no right? Cafeteria. You had to take your own lunch. Lunch, a little ham sandwich or cheese sandwich or something like that with probably right. an apple or a pear. Right. And then uh, you kept the thing. But I think living in Norristown, I, and I'm glad that we're going in through a, a revitalization now. There's a lot of interest. Uh, we're trying to uh, build and bring businesses back into Norristown, which I'm very happy. I still live in Norristown. I brought up a family of, of uh, uh, four children, and, uh, and I'm very happy and proud to still be a member, and I'm proud of this, this school, of, uh, our school system. I think we got one of the best school systems in the state. And uh, so, uh, you know, I, I'm just proud, and I'm glad that you're able to come here and just give us some uh, well, experience. Norristown, Norristown has always been a great place, and I think it's a combination of the politicians working together and the people. You, get to, you have to take pride in your community. Right. It's what you make it is what it's going to be. Right. And we've always had a lot of pride in, in our home and our surrounding area. Right. And I think the people are the people that, that are going to make it. Right. You know, there's an old proverb, yeah. you know, all sunshine makes deserts. Right. So, you know, if you want a beautiful garden, you got to have the rain and the snow and the hail, and you'll have a beautiful garden. You just want just everything to come out right all the time. No way. If you want all sunshine, you go to the Sahara Desert. And uh, nothing but sand there, and not, <laughs> not too many people living there. So, well, you know, Tom, it's just been a pleasure standing here talking to you uh, and, and to come here and ex ex exchange some some ideas, some thoughts, some wisdom, um, and, um, you know, it, it's just great that I'm so proud that I've known you uh, when we were young, and uh, the fact that your family is a shining example of a family sticking together, staying together, and helping each other, and that, that's, 
just like you expressed the it's one of the nicest thing and it's heartwarming to see a family stick together whether it's in business and marriage and the whole bit say so and I want to thank the Northtown School District I want to thank dr. Woodall Tony Coya and the staff of here behind the cameras at high school students that they're here doing this little show here and this will be our last of series for this for this term that ends after this show here then we will start up again in September and we're talking about people place and think we interview different people that we feel that it's interesting something that we can pass on to other people so on behalf of Tom Gennardi and Tom Gennardi and family I want to thank thank you for coming here and and thank you everybody and God bless you thank you very much thank you